there, how's it going? I'm here in Heraclio. In the back alleys here, very interesting neighborhood. You're going to see a lot in this video. There is quite a, a range of uh, parts of this city. And so I'm going to go from these like little uh, narrow lanes and everything and walk over to a uh, popular shopping uh, walking street. And then from there, walk down to the harbor and these old Venetian shipyards, the like ancient structures from uh, like more than 500 years ago. And so you're gonna see a lot in this video, but I thought that I would start it at a bit of a uh, random location, which is the place where I got my clothes washed just a couple of days ago. Partly because I just wanted to start it in this neighborhood and show some of these cool uh, back streets. And also just because people often wonder, where do you get your laundry done when you're traveling? And so you just go to your hotel and ask the person at the front desk, where can I get my laundry done? And they will usually uh, know. Or you can look online, look on Google Maps and just you know plug in laundry or clothes washing or whatever. And you'll find somewhere uh, nearby if you're in a town. And here they uh, wash, dry, and fold it. It was eight euros for a load of laundry. So great deal. So there you go. Wash, salon, laundry. And some more graffiti. There's going to be plenty more in the course of uh, wandering through these streets here. So I ended up coming up here several times. First time the uh, place was closed and then I had to come back and drop it off and then come back and pick it up. And so I got to know these uh, streets a little bit. And so that's one reason that I wanted to uh, walk through here is because I kind of know where I'm going. Chinese Asian cuisine. It is a quiet afternoon, but more people out than in a Greek island's little village at least. <laughs> And so in this video, then I will try to answer the question of, is it worth visiting Heraclio here? Which has uh, two spellings for some reason. One of which is correct, starting with the I, and then one that starts with a H, and it looks like Heraclion for some reason. I don't know why there's the two spellings, but uh, Heraclio, probably still off a little bit, but that's generally how you say it. Cool little alley right here. Authentic Cretan Cuisine. Opus. One of my favorite uh, cartoon characters. The comic strips. Oh, dang it. Now I'm forgetting what it's called. Berkeley Breathed is the uh, author, the cartoonist. It'll pop into my head here in two seconds with uh, Bill the Cat and... Opus and Milo and Bloom County. There we go. Little uh, park here. And so Heraclio here is the largest city on Crete. Crete is the largest island of Greece. The population of the city here is about 140,000. And everyone has said that uh, basically Heraclio here is like the worst place to go in Crete because it is the big city and, you know, city vibes and graffiti and noise and all that kind of stuff. And so tomorrow I'm going to Matala, which is on the south coast of uh, Crete and really looking forward to it. It looks really cool. Nice beaches and a uh, much smaller town should be a nice scene but Heraclio here is one of the main ferry ports and so if you come by ferry from Athens then a good chance you will end up here and also if you fly in then there is an airport here now this is where I've been doing my shopping getting my like juice and water and breakfast stuff And so up ahead is the uh, walking street. ATM machine there. I need to uh, use that. 
All right, we got some uh, music, it sounds like. And then the seat is down that way. And look at this amazing church. So different from the Kekladis Island churches. You always see the uh, white church with the blue dome. Like all of the churches, big or small, in the Kekladis Islands are always like that, even if they're like a really massive one. And so uh, Crete is different. They have their own styles of music and food. And, and so I'm just going to walk up here a little ways Pardon the noise. And then I will turn around and head back down to the sea and show the Venetian shipyard. And so I am filming with the new GoPro 7. I just bought it two days ago. And so this is only my second video filming with it. And where I bought it was right down one of these streets, I forget which one, this one or this one, a store called Public. And a funny thing, if uh, anybody out there saw my video from Larnaca, Cyprus, and I started the video at a big uh, mural next to this parking lot, and written in orange, it said Public. Hey there, how's it going? I'm here in Larnaca in Eastern Cyprus. And I was confused in the video. I was like, is this uh, like saying that it's public parking or something like that? And public is a electronic store. All right, I think I'm going to uh, turn around here. And so that's where I bought my GoPro is at public electronics. So this also is a Venetian building, Venetian Loggia Town Hall. The Venetians were an empire that controlled a large uh, part of the Mediterranean. And so I was thinking about uh, what else I could talk about in this video. Because usually when I do these videos, then I try to uh, sort of discuss something else, kind of random, but uh, just to have something to talk about, other than just walking along showing things. And I thought that I would talk about why I don't talk about food more in my videos. I show food. I will like regularly show my uh, dinner or lunch or whatever. People like to see food. Yeah, they do like to see food. <laughs> but I just kind of show it and then I put the camera away and then move on and, and I don't like describe the flavors or talk about the ingredients and stuff like that. And so there's three kind of specific reasons why I don't go more into the food. The first one, it's awkward trying to talk in a restaurant. It's awkward enough doing this video right now people have been like looking at me like who's this guy what's he doing talking to himself while he walks along there but you're walking along and they walk past you and you can more easily just kind of ignore it but when you're in a restaurant then it's a different thing people are sitting all around you trying to enjoy their dinner and then you're trying to like talk about the food or whatever and it just attracts attention to yourself especially when you're also holding a camera even just taking the camera out and just like doing a doing like a quick scan of the food can feel awkward like people look over you like why are you taking your camera out in the middle of a restaurant kind of a thing and so that is the first reason is just there's 
awkward situation of, of trying to film in a restaurant when other people are trying to dine and enjoy their meals. But added to that is the fact that I'm traveling solo and that makes it that much more difficult because trying to talk by yourself in a re restaurant is especially strange. At least if you're there with somebody else, then you're going to be expected to be talking with them. And so it makes more sense that you're sitting there talking. Sitting there by yourself talking is weird. And then there's trying to film yourself. Like trying to eat and like go like this um, and talk to the camera and explain things and everything when you're by yourself. And so that makes it just even more strange and difficult. It's a lot easier if somebody can hold the camera, point it at you, and then you got your hands free and you can talk and explain things. And so that's at least more doable. If I was traveling with somebody else and I would uh, show food more often. All right, so here's the harbor where I caught the taxi to Nosos uh, yesterday. Here you can see it's 11 euros one way. And then I caught the uh, bus back for two euros and 50 cents. And so that is one of the uh, main reasons to come to Heraclio here is to go see the ancient uh, Minoan ruins of Nosos. Definitely worth it. Get a uh, taste of Greek history. Very old Greek history. It is about like six, seven kilometers or something out of uh, town here. And so you can rent a car and drive there or catch a taxi or find the bus. I wanted to take the uh, taxi there because uh, it's easier than trying to find the bus station and then it was easy to take the uh, bus back because it comes right from there at the ruins and then drops you off at the bus station in town. And so uh, that is a cool walkway that goes along that fortress and then it keeps on going and it's a uh, water break that kind of curves around, but it's like a kilometer long uh, walk. It's a really nice walk. You can uh, bicycle along there and there is a wall there. It breaks right there and then it uh, keeps going the wall on the other side. And so that blocks the wind. A colorful scene here with all the uh, fishermen's boats. And then up ahead here, are the Venetian shipyards where they built the ships. The uh, construction of these began in the 14th or 15th centuries, so more than 500 years old and, uh, and then up until like the 17th century, so very old history in these walls here and I will uh, get up closer to them. And so there is a third reason why I don't uh, record more food and talk about it more which is that when it comes to uh, being lunchtime or dinner time, I kind of just want to enjoy my food and not have to talk about it and explain it and like, and like think and um, try to figure out the flavors and try to describe foods and whatever technical food terminology. Speaking of food, some uh, corn and uh, chestnuts, I guess. And so when it's meal time, I just really want to just eat my food and it's like a break from the filming. If I'm making a video and I've been doing a lot of filming throughout the day and walking around and, you know, taking in all the new sites and everything and trying to insert some facts into the videos and looking on, you know, Google to get information and, you know, it, it's, it's work making these videos. And so lunchtime or dinner time comes around and I just kind of want to relax and just enjoy the the meal and so that's why I do just a quick little scan of my food and kind of tell you what it is and then I put the camera away and enjoy dinner so if it weren't for all those three factors then there would probably be more discussion of food in my videos all right get across the street here and get a little closer but that's just the way it is you know, I do my best to just at least give you a taste of what I'm tasting and uh, show you the uh, local cuisine and you get to see what it looks like at least and get an idea for uh, what the food is like in these various countries that I'm going to. So check this out. I guess a ship would have 
come in here and then they'd be working on it. Pretty intense to think of the history here. 500 years ago, people swarming around here, working on a ship, building ships to sail out into the Mediterranean and go gather goods and go on wars and go visit family and go to Athens, politicians coming to Crete, you know, all that kind of stuff. Port of Arachio. So there you can see the other spelling. I don't know why they don't just spell it how it's supposed to be pronounced, but that's Heraklio in 1900. So is uh, Heraklio worth visiting? It is definitely worth a stop. I've been here for uh, three days and that was about right to just get a taste of it and see uh, Nosos and walk around and, and uh, get some stuff done uh, on the computer, you know, because I have the videos to edit and everything. But uh, really just a day or two is, is enough, especially if you have limited time on Crete or in Greece, then from everything that I've heard, then um, you want to get out and see other parts of Crete, rent a car and explore the island, go to the other uh, smaller places with the nicer beaches and less of this noise around you. And so tomorrow I take a bus from the bus station, which is like straight over there, like a uh, five to 10 minute walk. So I'll just walk there, catch the bus about a, uh, like I think 90 minute bus ride or something down to the southern part of Crete. And then I will be in Matala, which sounds uh, really cool for the next uh, three days after that. So more coming from Greece. See ya.